Hello, good morning. A cyclist rides from one town to another. On the first day, she covers two fifths of the total distance. The next day, she covers one quarter of what is left. The following day, she covers two fifths of the remainder. On the fourth day, half the remaining distance. She now has 10 miles left. How far has she traveled? So this is one of the mensa brain teaser problems that you can get from the i newspaper at weekends. How do you even start to tackle this sort of problem? Well, to begin with, I'll break the problem down into individual days. Let's say that the total distance is S, and we list the amount of S that the girl travels each day. We don't actually know what the distance S is to begin with until we work out all these little fractions of the total distance. Then we kind of have to add them all up and mess with them some more. First up, how many days has she traveled for? Well, it says first day, the next day, the following day and the fourth day. So that is four days. Let's see if we can work out what portion of the total distance S she covers for each day. Well, the first day she covers two fifths of the total distance. So that's just two over five times S. The next day she covers one quarter of what is left. Well, the first thing we have to do here is work out what is actually left after the end of the first day. So if she cycles two fifths on the first day, she must have three fifths left to go altogether. So two fifths plus three fifths equals five fifths equals one. Five over five is one. So that's just one. And I thought I'd mention this, cause just in case you're a bit rusty with fractions. I remember when I was, I was small, my, my dad asked me, how many sevenths in a whole one? And I said, mm, 10. And he sort of like shook his head and scowled, you know, because there's seven sevenths in a whole one. So there's two, there's two halves, there's three thirds, there's four quarters, there's five fifths, there's six sixths. There's a hundred hundredths, blah, blah, blah. But, going back to the question, she, she only travels for one quarter of what is left, okay? So, um, so we did two fifths on the first day, there's three fifths left, she does a quarter of this, so it's a quarter times three fifths, which is three twentieths. Okay, around using a little asterisk set symbol to represent one number times another. The following day, three, she tells two fifths of the remainder. Again, we have to work out what's the remainder after after day two, before we can work out how far she travels on day three. After the first day, there was three fifths of the total left, and after the second day, we took one quarter of the three fifths. So the remainder after day two is three quarters of the three fifths. So th three times three over four times five is nine twentieths. That's what she's got left after day two. So on day three, she travels two fifths of this nine twentieths, which is, is 18 over 100. She's traveled 18 hundredths of the total distance S on day three. The fourth day, half of the remaining distance. Again, we have to work out the remainder after day three before we can work out the distance she cycles on day four. Well, if she did two fifths of the remainder on day three, then she must have three fifths of the remainder left after day three. So three fifths of nine twentieths is 27 hundredths. Now it says that for day four, she covers half of this remaining distance. So it's just a half times 27 hundredths, okay? Which is 27 two hundredths. That's what she covers on day four. Then, has 10 miles left. How far has she traveled? Well, let's summarize all the parts of S, the total distance of S, the total distance that she has traveled for each of the four days. So two fifths of S on the first day, three twentieths of S on the second day, 18 hundredths of S on the third day, and 27 two hundredths of S on the fourth day. So altogether, the girl has cycled, whatever they are, added up. What we would like to know is what proportion of the total distance S that she cycled altogether, okay? So we need to add up these bits of S. To, we need to add up these fractions. To do that, we make them all the same on the bottom. Okay, I'll show you what I mean by that. 
So we can make them all have 200 on the bottom because the last uh, entry for day four had 200 on the bottom. So it's easy to, to go with that one, the bigger one. So the first day was 2 fifths less. If I multiply 2 fifths by 40 over 40, which is the same as 1, then and I've chosen 40 because 40 times 5 is 200, which is what I want. So 40 over 40. Uh, 40 times 2 is 80, 40 times 5 is 200, so 2 fifths is actually the same as 80 two hundredths, and we do the same for each one. So on the second day, to get 200 on the bottom, I just multiply 3 twentieths by 10. So 10 over 10 is 1, um, multiply the top by 10, 10 times 3 is 30, ten, bottom by 10, we get the 200 that we wanted. Third day, we add 18 hundredths. So just multiply by 2 to get 200 on the bottom. 36 two hundredths. So let's list them all again. Okay, so we've got 80 two hundredths, 30 two hundredths, 36 two hundredths, and 27 two hundredths. So if you add these up, we can do it easily now. So 80 plus 30 plus 36 plus 27 is 173 over two hundredths. That is the proportion of S that she's traveled over the four days okay so she hasn't done it all yet this is total distance she's traveled altogether over the four days she then said it then says that she has 10 miles left but if she's traveled that then to find s the total distance travel we need to know what proportion of s is equal to this 10 miles okay what's left after she's traveled that so we know that 200 two hundredths is a whole one so we have to take what she's traveled away from the whole away from the whole of s. So 200 minus 173 is 27 two hundredths. So this 27 two hundredths that she has yet to go is equal to 10 miles. So how do we work out what s is from that? So what we actually do is we uh, multiply both sides. I'll go back to this slide. We multiply both sides of this equation by 200 over 27 because that will make it That'll make this fraction cancel on the left, and it'll actually multiply the 10 by 200 over 27. Show you what I mean. 200 over 27 times the left hand side is the same as 200 over 200 uh, times 27 over 27 times s, which is 1 over 1 is s. Okay, so it basically cancels. Um, and then on the right, we've got the 10 times 200 times over 27 ends up with 2,000 over 27. So this is 74.07 miles, if I work that out on a calculator, or with a long division. Now, the answer at the back of the I newspaper says 64.07 miles. So what's gone wrong? Well, the answer is nothing's gone wrong. We didn't read the question properly. It says, how far has she traveled? Okay, so if the total distance s is seventy four point zero seven miles, and she still has and she still has ten miles left, then she has travelled seventy four point zero seven minus ten, which is sixty four point zero seven miles. Ta da! We got the answer right. Another thing that I wanted to mention here is that on the fourth day, it says she travels half the remaining distance. Well, we worked that out to be. 27 over 200. Then the other half of the remaining distance must also be 27 over 200 s. Okay, and this must be equal to the 10 miles which is left. Okay, so basically, I could have worked it all out without actually adding everything up. So I, why did I bother doing all that, silly old daddy? Well, the answer is. Um, I thought I'd make the point at this point that I'm using these kind of mental pro problems as sort of like a, a teaching thing. Okay, so they're, they're kind of like handy, fun things to do to learn, you know, fractions. Even if it wasn't half the remaining distance, you could still you could still work it out. So say that on the fourth day she did a third of the remaining distance. And then, so that you'd know that remaining, remaining distance will be two thirds of what's left. And so that equals 20 miles or something. So you still wouldn't need to add it up. You wouldn't need to add it up. Now, another thing I thought I'd point out 
about fractions is we made a common denominator into 200. Um, a fraction is made up of a numerator and a denominator. Uh, just a final little point, uh, if you know computer programming such as Python, then maybe you can see if you can code for a bit this problem. Okay. I hope I was able to explain things in this video clearly. Thank you for watching it. If you like my videos, please subscribe.